our Lord Safety International second sixth international. Uh, we are very grateful that uh, Prime Minister has partnered with us this year. And I think we, we might get a little prize <laughs> next time. Uh, delighted to be here in the land of Vision Zero. Uh, we've been trying to have Vision Zero in one country for a long time. Uh, I think uh, some more time to go. Uh, we have special call out, invited all of you to participate in our effort to in our effort to generate scientific evidence for achieving vision zero the road ahead. Uh, I, keep, I personally am very happy to be here again. Uh, we've been coming here for some time. The first time for me was in 1976 when Bertolt was invited to finish my PhD to give a seminar at uh, the Towns at the same time. But since 1889, I think, uh, we know Marie and others and Lucy here at uh, Karolinska and we've been collaborating on and off for at least three decades. And so it's a real pleasure to be back. And we're really grateful that they've been very, very, very gracious in partnering with us. Uh, the Independent Council for Road Safety International, which most people are in the course in, was established about five years ago. Before that, before that, Barry and I had many conversations on how to get it going. Uh, Ian Roberts, I don't see here yet. Uh, he was a part of the conversation. Ethan sitting here, Professor Ethan Tavari, she was a part of the conversation. Tami uh, Hoka, Professor Hoka from the University of Chicago. Uh, Mark, right here. So about 10 of us got together. And we tried to make sure that we had at least one person from each continent. And but because we started from India, we thought we could have one more from India. Uh, we are particularly lucky to have Barry with us because he had a lot of experience in establishing uh, organizations. He was partly responsible for establishing PACs in India. Volunteered by the Committee for Traffic Safety, then also the European Traffic Safety Council in Brussels. All of us came together in a course because we had serious concerns about what international agencies, aid agencies, uh, multinational agencies, and even aid agencies from different governments are doing about road safety, especially in Africa, South America, and Asia. And our concern is that they are not following what is known in their own countries as evidence-based road safety interventions. So I would suspect that at least 70% of work done in our part of the world, especially, and even here in Europe, uh, some of it is not based on our own knowledge. Sorry. Um, the reasons are many because I think a lot of stuff is not, a, is not common sense. And a lot of the road, real road safety interventions which work and don't work defy common, what is called common sense. And we learned that with hard work, especially with the pioneers in the 70s and 80s. And I think uh, we, we do not have that kind of pioneering work done. After the 90s, after the 90s, become much more computer-based, monthly, and so on. Sometimes that's good, but we have to have a little more theory, I think. Um, we at the court try to maintain our independence <coughs> by not accepting contributions with, from organizations which may be seen as compromising our integrity. And that makes life a bit difficult uh, because uh, we don't have that much money because people who give money wants to influence us. Uh, so we learn to work on a very, very lean budget and that's helped because of people like Lucy, Mur Murray and Lucy you know, from places like Carolinsk and we partner wherever we go with the local institution. Uh, some people also believe that in 
the modern world, where using public roads has become a compulsory activity, you cannot live without using a public road, uh, then it becomes imperative that safety on the road be considered a fundamental human right. And if you consider road safety a fundamental human right, then vision zero has a little more logic. Uh, for the past six months, at the course, we have been working on uh, preparing an evidence and gap map in collaboration with the uh, Campbell Collaboration and the CEO of Campbell Collaboration, uh, Howard, is sitting here in the morning uh, later on in the session. Uh, what we've been doing is to actually go through all the literature on road safety over the last six months, I think, uh, except car technology. And that's about 50,000 citations, I think, with me being through and selected some. Um, we would like to engage all of you in this exploratory adventure for generation of more theory and knowledge. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to get close to vision zero. Road safety as a science is based more on hunches, experience, and empirical relationships rather than scientific knowledge based on an understanding of cause and effect. Uh, it is not surprising that, that pedestrian deaths have been increasing in the U.S. over the past three or four years. Because if we were that way, they should be increasing in the richest country around the world. Uh, we must also remember that the U.N. New Decade for Road Safety was launched 10 years ago. And we are meeting here because there's another conference after 10 years tomorrow, starting tomorrow. But we have to remember that uh, in many parts of the world, actually, that's an increase, or not half which was the objective of the decade. This essentially means that we cannot take anything at all for granted while engaging with our hopes and fears about the future. Uh, even when something had to be envisioned so persuasively, by many of us, it can still go wrong. Uh, basically, in the lives of men and women and human societies in general, we become complacent when something goes well for a while. And I think that's partly what's happened in some parts of the world. In a simplistic way of pursuing science, we sometimes give a great deal of importance to the past and explore, extrapolate our understanding into an unknown future. This obviously excludes unexpected disruptions and the complexities that alter our course ahead. This may be particularly true in dealing with road safety. No European society in the past envisioned a future where 90% of the vehicles on the road may be motorcycles, and that's Vietnam of today. And so we have to understand that in any society around the world, things are happening which were not envisioned before in different ways. And this is just, this is just one example. Today we want to discuss with you what we seem to know about interventional road safety and what we do. The limited scope of today's exercise is not to decide on what should be done, but we really want to focus on what more work and research needs to be done. I would like to end with a quote from my friend Sean Menon, who ran a university for 10 years in Delhi, who spent a great deal of time thinking about visions. Um, aspirations, dreams, despair, and prayer. He says, a vision is grounded on historical accidents and mobilizations that have already been accomplished, often through a painful and protracted process. Yet, vision stretches beyond what objective circumstances and historical antecedents would prepare ground for. It is a force that galvanizes people, a community, a society or a whole nation to act beyond themselves and their limited historical rules. And I think this is kind of, I, it just struck me, I read this about 10 years ago. And I, I thought it was so, so, so valid for us. You both would just say that, however, when one finds oneself in total despair and emerges completely in despondency, one wishes intensely for things to fall into place in ways we do not completely comprehend. 
and put this back on the path of Hashem as it wishes. And when this reason provides the little hope, then we resort to prayer. This workshop is grounded in the hope that we will not have to resort to prayer. Now I would like to invite Dr. Hutchinson, President of Carlinsville, to give his opening remarks. Thanks very much.